Hi, thanks for joining me in the video today. Battery degradation in electric vehicles is a common fear that people have before buying an EV. I did a video previously about EV myths, but I wanted to go into more detail on this one. With current technology and continued battery improvements, batteries in electric vehicles can last longer and take you even further. Today, I wanted to go over battery degradation as well as show you how my car's battery has held up. First things first, let me show you how my car's battery has been doing. This is my 2019 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus with 17,000 miles driven. Tesla lists the range on the car as 240 miles. The battery is constantly being calibrated and balanced. However, Tesla does a more in-depth balancing when the car sits above 90%. At a 100% charge, my car has a range of 225 miles, so that is about 6%. A majority of battery degradation happens early in its life, so I expect this curve to smooth out. Batteries are expected to decline non-linearly. When I'm at home, I use level 2 charging. The only time I use level 3 charging is when I travel long distances. Additionally, the Fleet Karma adapter in my car is currently saying 100% health. It only calculates this on increments of 5%. So according to the car reported data, I don't have more than 5% degradation. I am not sure where the discrepancy is. Unfortunately, Fleet Karma doesn't give me direct access to the CAN bus data. This 2018 Long Range Tesla Model 3 has a little over 51,000 miles driven. This car is listed as having 310 miles of range. At 100% charge, this car has a range of 290 miles, so that is about 6% degradation. This number was at 295 just the other day to give you an idea of how quickly it fluctuates up and down. This car did a lot of supercharging for the first year since the owner lived in an apartment. Since then, their routine has changed, and now they charge at home with their level 2 charger. Their Fleet Karma data also shows 100% health. The numbers for both cars are in line with what is expected for battery degradation, which is great. An electric vehicle contains battery packs which are made up of many lithium battery cells. Over time, the capacity of the battery will slowly reduce. A battery's condition is called its state of health. Batteries start their life at around 100% state of health, and over time they deteriorate. However, current EVs have better battery storage potential than they did 8 years ago, and the durability of the battery has also improved. As an example, Tesla's 2019 impact report showed that their Model S and X battery capacity retained 95% health after 50,000 miles, and then hit about 90% health when passing 200,000 miles. There will be differences in different vehicle manufacturers with state of health depending on what temperature control techniques they use for their EVs, battery chemistry, and what protection buffers they have. Factors that can impact lithium-ion battery health are temperature, state of charge, and electric current. All three of these put stress on the battery when pushing them to the extremes. Here are some things you can do to maximize the life of an electric car battery. One. Exposure to extreme temperatures can affect the battery performance. Try to park your car in a shaded area or in a garage. I usually try to put a sunshade in my car to protect the interior from getting too hot to prevent cabin overheat protection from turning on as much in my car. Thanks to liquid thermal management system, batteries also last longer. Thermal management is incredibly important. It helps to keep the battery pack at a safe temperature. Have you ever had your phone pop up with a message saying it's too hot? This is because small electronics like phones and laptops aren't able to do anything to keep their batteries cool. They will limit performance or even shut down if they start getting too hot. In an EV, the battery pack will cool or heat itself when needed. Two, don't let your car sit at 100% charge and don't let it go completely to 0%. These extreme highs and lows can put stress on the battery, so it's best to keep them at a safe number. There are different recommendations that I have found on what the state of charge should be. Most of them are based off of temperature. One of those common recommendations is to keep an average daily charge of 20% to 90%. Here in my car, I limit up to 70% in the summer to put less stress on the battery since it gets so hot in Arizona. In the winter time, I set it all the way up to 90%. Three, only use high power charging when going on EV road trips and use level two charging when at home and for daily commutes. 
An article from SAE International assessed battery electric vehicles charging on fast chargers accounting for different factors. They found that the impact of realistic fast charging on battery degradation is minimal for most drivers due to the low frequency of use. However, without the use of an active battery cooling system and high use of fast charging, it can result in an unsafe peak battery temperatures. So battery cooling systems are very important. Let's look at this Geotab EV battery degradation comparison tool. Currently, this data is based on 6,300 fleet and consumer EVs, representing 1.8 million days of data. Fortunately, data from Geotab and EV Fleet Tracking Analyzer showed high use of an EV did not negatively impact the battery life. It looks like this chart doesn't display mileage and it just displays time. This is all based on observed data. Let's compare a 2013 Nissan LEAF and a 2016 Nissan LEAF. While there isn't as much data on the 2016, you can still tell the newer car is performing better, probably due to the improvement in battery chemistry. Let's see another car. The 2017 Volkswagen e-Golf has a 96.9% .9 state of health at 2 years and 8 months. The 2017 Kia Soul EV has a 98.8% .8 state of health after 2 years and 8 months. Hopefully more data can be gathered to display additional information on different types of EVs. I participate in this program called Fleet Karma that I signed up for through my local utility company. This little adapter sends information about my charging and usage habits so that my utility company can prepare for the future adoption of EVs. Hopefully they're able to use this data to continue to report battery health over time. Giving automakers direct data about the health of the car helps them to improve in the future. Giving electrical companies data on charging habits helps them to increase infrastructure in areas where EVs adoption is happening faster. Another thing people wonder about is what happens at the end of the battery's life. EV batteries can continue to be useful after being removed from a vehicle. Some are used as solar home power systems or are used to support the electricity grid. I think grid storage is a great second life for an EV battery. Even if you have an extreme case of 20% degradation, a long-range Model S battery still has an 80 kilowatt hour of energy storage available. So, the end of its useful life in the car might actually end up being the beginning of its useful life elsewhere. At its true end of life, the batteries are highly recyclable since they're mostly made of metals and plastics. Most car manufacturers offer an 8-year, 100,000 mile warranty for the batteries, though different companies will vary. These batteries are made to last and the automakers give them a warranty to match. Here's the takeaway of the video. Don't worry, just keep driving and charge up when you can. Most likely your batteries will outlive the life of your car. That's all for today. If you're an EV owner, what has been your experience with battery degradation? If you're a future EV owner, what concerns do you have? Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai is my dog. And check out my website at www.kaiesev.com. That's all for now and happy charging.